Okay, so this is the next um, video lecture for probability for first year full time maths for managers, first year part time business maths one. Just as a reminder, we said that the uh, sample space, uh, and this was the last. Uh, last lecture, we said that the sample space was the set of all outcomes to some experiment. Okay, so sample space was all outcomes all possible outcomes um, of some experiment. Okay, so it's the set of all possible outcomes of some experiment and an event. With some subset. Of the sample space. Okay. Now let's talk about what I mean by the probability of an event. Okay. We'll get straight to it. Okay. So, so, the probability of an event We'll give the event a name, we'll call it A, and some number the number is called P of A for probability of A, and it's such that zero must be less than or equal to the probability of A which is less than or equal to one, okay? Um, and this is uh, um, fairly uh, intuitive. Probabilities must be either um, between, they must be between zero or one. Um, zero, um, I'm sorry, I should say, P of A equal to zero, what would that indicate? That would indicate that the event A is considered impossible. Okay. Um, there is another term that people use which is almost impossible. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment. Um, right. So what does the probability of one indicate? Well, if the probability of A is equal to one, that would indicate that the event A is considered a certainty. Which would mean that it would be impossible for A not to happen. Okay? So for example, if I go back to my example of rolling this die, okay, D6, so yeah, there's a, a probability of an event where I have an even roll, a high roll, um, whatever it might be. But there's also the probability that when I roll the die, um, uh, you know, I could talk about the event that the, um, you know, the die disappears, okay? 
but that's not considered to be a possible event. Okay, so that would be an event that I would say has probability zero. And that would be that I don't get any outcome, essentially. Um, the other one would be, um, say I roll the die, and the event is that I get a number between zero and ten. Okay, well, look at my numbers. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All of those numbers are between zero and ten. Uh, that event is a certainty. Okay, so that would be an example of an event with probability one. Now, the... When you're dealing with finite probabilities, things that uh, you know have some finite number of possibilities, uh, these definitions are are perfectly good. The only difficulty comes in when you're dealing with um, infinitely many possible cases. Okay, um, in which case it may be necessary to say that this is considered almost impossible or that this is considered almost certain. So, for example. What is the probability that any person on Earth has a height of exactly 1.8 meters? Well, we would say that the probability of that is zero, and the reason is because um, uh, the reason is that if I have an accurate enough measure uh, of height, and I can go down first to the meter, then the centimeter, then the millimeter, the micrometer, the nanometer, the picometer. Uh, as far down as I want to go until I'm dealing with atomic, ma you know, atomic distances, it's extraordinarily unlikely that anybody's height would be exactly 1.8 meters. You know, if I zoom in all the way down, I can always uh, find some difference between a person's height and the exact number of 1.8 meters. Almost always, okay, I should say. Um, so the assumption is that if I... Uh, perform this process of, you know, zooming in and getting a more and more accurate measure of people's weight or height for, um, in this example, then um, I would never find anybody who had a height of exactly 1.8 meters. Um, but that's the situation there is because there's infinitely many possible uh, heights that a person could have, okay? For example, on a dice roll, okay, there's only six possible faces, okay? So um, considerations like that don't quite come into the, the picture, okay? So I need that the probability um, of uh, A is some number between zero and one, okay? And now the sample space, um, we're gonna let S be the sample space. makes sense. Okay. Well, then the probability of S must be equal to 1. Okay. So let's just indicate that there. So this is a really important thing to, to highlight. Okay. What does this mean? Well, uh, S, remember, is the set of all possible outcomes, okay? So the probability of S says, what is the probability that I get some outcome? And the point is that I'm doing a statistical experiment, and the statistical experiment is something which gives me an outcome. So getting an outcome is considered a certainty, okay? Um, or getting some outcome is considered a certainty, okay? Um, now, that's, uh, that's, that's some stuff about the sample space. Now, let's do a really easy uh, example. Let's talk about um, equally likely outcomes. Suppose all outcomes. Are equally likely. Okay, and that there's finitely many of them.
Well, in this case, okay, um, what is uh, the probability of A? Well, the probability of A, then, is equal to the number of ways A can occur. Okay, and I would need to divide that by the total number um, of possible outcomes. Okay, so let's do an example with equally likely outcomes. Okay, and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so for example, let's say I had uh, the case of the uh, so we roll a d6. Okay, roll a d6. Okay, and we're going to let a be what? Okay, a was the event and we'll make it um, that we get an even number of spots. We get a face. With an even number of spots. Okay, so A is the event that we get an even number of spots. Okay, which means we have the two-sided face. Sorry, not the two-sided face, the two-spotted face, the four-spotted face, and the six-spotted face. Okay, that's my event A. Okay, and now the probability of A then is what? It's the number of ways that A can occur, okay, which is three. Okay, the number of total possible outcomes, we saw this before, um, let me just bring up the set here, from the previous lecture, that is my total sample space, okay, and we can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six possible outcomes, so that would be three and six, which would be one half, okay, so I'll refer back to this example a few times, okay? So that would be what I would mean uh, by, you know, a situation with equally likely outcomes. Um, okay, we can see that there we have uh, an outcome, uh, an outcome that would be um, an even number of spots. Uh, we can see that there are three such outcomes and then uh, 3 divided by 6 would give me 1 half. Now, this is not really a great definition most of the time. Uh, why is this not a great definition? The reason that this isn't a great definition is, first of all, there might be infinitely many uh, possible outcomes, and I can't divide by an infinite number. Okay, that, that's you know, something that would require a bit more care. Um, the other problem is that... Um, sometimes outcomes themselves are not equally likely, okay? There are many events where the outcome is, uh, where certain outcomes are favored and other outcomes are less than li uh, less likely, okay? So, um, there are other, uh, there are other ways that things could, ha uh, we could talk about, we could say, um, an idea of what's called empirical probability, And this would be the idea where we have repeated trials, okay? So then we would say that the probability of A would be the number of times that A occurs, okay, over the total number of trials.
But I've said before that I'm not the biggest fan of this. Um, and the reason is because there's a simple question of, well, uh, how do you know if you have enough trials? Okay, uh, that's hard to tell. Okay, so for example, um, you know, the likelihood of, um, say for example, an event that, I, that potentially we can repeat, okay, but um, is so unlikely that, um, you know, we would need many, many thousands of trials to even have one outcome. Uh, what occurrence, okay? Well, in that case, uh, if I don't run my trials for long enough, I would assume that my probability is zero, even if my probability is non-zero. Um, and of course, the other problem is that this assumes that I can repeat trials, and I can't al always do that, okay? So, um, that's one possibility as well. That gets used quite a lot in... Um, in the real world. So for example, we could say, okay, well, what's the probability that I win the lotto um, when I play? Okay, well, if I were to look at this kind of situation here, I have never won the lottery and I've played a lot of times. Okay, so my total number of trials is something which isn't zero. The times I uh, have won is essentially nothing. Okay, well, in fact, it is nothing. I've never won uh, the full lottery. So zero over something uh, is still zero, so this wouldn't work. And of course then, on the other hand, this outcome, uh, this situation here, um, this would indicate, um, you know, the number of ways something can occur versus the number of possible outcomes. I can count up the number of possible combinations in the lottery. Uh, I could um, say, well, I have a winning ticket, so that's my, my probability of winning here. But we're noticing, well, look, now we have two different definitions of the same thing. Okay, uh, and they're not compatible. Okay, so uh, it's not a neither of those really are, are the ideal definition. Um, the real definition, like I said, is that the probability of A um, in most instances, the probability of A is simply. A measure of our belief that A will occur. Okay, so um, Okay, so um, let's say I was talking about the probability of, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, the moon blowing up. Okay, maybe it is zero, I don't know. Maybe it's non-zero, but the point is there's no repeated trial. It's not like we can see how many times the moon would blow up um, and then uh, repeat it over and over again. Some, some trials are essentially destructive. They can only be done once. Um, so this would be more like the idea of subjective probability. Probability. Okay, I'm not much for spelling. Um, so there's an example here. It says, uh, the probability that Newcastle uh, United will win their next game cannot be assigned classically or empirically. Why? Because there's no set of equally likely outcomes and no way to repeat the experiment under many times. So this is really like an educated guess, okay? Based on the information available to us. Now I want to uh, basically draw some events um, and show you what events would look like in some set diagrams, and we'll talk about that next. But um, I learned just the other day that if I let these videos run a bit longer than about 27 minutes, um, I can get into some trouble. So I'm going to stop the video here, and then I'll make another video uh, demonstrating those diagrams.